Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. Well, Tracy, right here in the Northern Hemisphere, spring has finally arrived, and the flu season is pretty much all but over. But you know, this year's flu season was a tough one, especially for middle-aged people. You know, the, the flu usually hits the very young and the very old the hardest, but this year... People between the ages of 50 and 64, that's just a little bit older than than you are, Mm -hmm. a decade or two older than you Mm -hmm. are. They're the ones that had to be hospitalized the most often. And the flu vaccine this year, it didn't work all that well in preventing the flu, unfortunately. So so (laughs) says the orthopedic surgeon who suffered from the flu. Oh, yeah, I've never been sicker in my life. Oh, boy. this Close to death. Yeah. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, this year's flu vaccine was only 48% effective. And while flu usually hits the very young and very old hardest, why is that? That's what you already read. Whatever. Just keep the 48% Oh, yeah, I I took that out. So you're just... uh, I switched some paragraphs. <laughs> uh, so You're just, just taking over. Here to talk about. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you don't, yeah. You don't need to repeat stuff I've yeah, already said. Yeah, I guess. Said. Well, I was reading what sorry. you told me to read. Yeah. Here to talk about this year's flu season is infectious disease expert, Dr. Pratish Tosh. Welcome back to the program, uh, Dr. Tosh. Thank you very much for having me back. Boy, he is going to lay into you That's because fine. he Let got the flu <laughs> shot I and he got the it. flu. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of required if you work here, and that's all okay. I don't mind getting the flu shot, but it 48% effective doesn't sound so good. It doesn't like it was a very good year for the flu vaccine. Yeah, and when we look at our influenza vaccine and compare it to other vaccines we have, look at measles or um, really a lot of the other things we have, um, you know, everything else seems to be you know, a really good vaccine. Influenza vaccine is generally not as good as some of the other vaccines we have, and a lot of this is related to, I mean, this we're talking about decades, maybe over half a century old technology. Right now it is the best we have. And I think it uh, leads to, we need a lot more research to develop novel influenza vaccines. You know, wouldn't it be great if you had a vaccine that you actually didn't have to take every year <laughs> that would uh, cover all the different strains and would you know, be you know, 90% effective and last a decade? And you know, people are working on that. Well, th- it, it, they should be, but isn't it sort of uh, it's because there are so many different strains of influenza that you can't cover them all. It's guesswork to decide which one is going to raise its head uh, uh, this year, in the coming year. And it's sort of like uh, trying to get a vaccine for the cold, right? There are thousands of or hundreds of cold virus Uh, cold viruses and you can't vaccinate somebody because you can't vaccinate against all of them is is that sort of true yes and no mostly no well you're the expert (laughs) (laughs) so uh, hold on well let me re-ask that then (laughs) isn't it because the flu vaccine is just always changing and so just like the flu is always changing so we're we in public health usually pretty good at predicting which influenza vaccine which, which influenza strains are going to be circulating the following year and able to put that into the uh, vaccine. Even when we are very good at predicting, and we say we usually are, the 90% time mm-hmm. plus, uh, the vaccine is still, we're looking at 60 to 70% uh, efficacious in healthy individuals. Well, we can look at it this way, Dr. Isn't Shum. that what I just said? <laughs> <laughs> I got the flu shot, didn't tell me, get tell the Tell me the wrong the part different. of my question. So the yeah. wrong part is that <laughs> there's just so many strains out there, it's really hard to predict what's going on to mm-hmm. what to put in the vaccine. Mm-hmm. And so we're actually really good at, at predicting what's going to be going around and to find the right strain to put in the vaccine. The issue is that the vaccine, uh, with using the current technologies, is not as effective as we'd like. Now, 60 to 70% effective is much better than not getting it all, right? And even better than a coin flip. Um, and for those who even get influenza, let's say we're looking at the very young or the very old, uh, we do see that we even those who get vaccinated and then still get infection, uh, they are you know, less likely to have really bad outcomes. So it's still somewhat helpful. Um, and so I still want people to get it. Mm-hmm. But I think it also talks about you know, right now in a great year with a good match, we're still looking at 60 to 70 percent. And we compare it to things like measles vaccine, which you know 99 percent effective. Maybe we need more emphasis on developing a new vaccine. Well, usually you hear about it's the you know children or elderly that really get hit hard by the flu. But this year it was middle aged adults. 
So you described those over age 50 as middle-aged, and <laughs> that's an entire another topic. I'll let you guys <laughs> discuss that on your own. Um, but it is people at the extremes of age, even this year, when we're looking at influenza deaths, um, it is still people who at the extremes of age uh, and those with underlying medical problems who are most likely to have actual death as a consequence of influenza. L let me ask my other question a different way without any commentary. Why isn't there a vaccine for the common cold? Ah, well, uh, there's a lot of different common colds. This is where you were absolutely right with your previous comment, uh, and that there's a lot of different viruses, and it'd be, t at this point, tough to cover them, although I suspect we might be able to uh, create a vaccine that would cover a lot of the strains that are avail uh, out there. But then it comes to, well, how do you, how do you put the forth the uh, money to create a vaccine that uh, where even if people get the infection, they really don't die? Right. So what are you trying to prevent? And is there is that research money and sort of the money from a pharmaceutical company better spent elsewhere? And so, th yeah, these are some of the sort of uh, barriers you mentioned, you know, wouldn't it be great if someday you could get a flu vaccine every 10 years that would have 90 some percent effect? Yeah. Is that really a direction that research is heading? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, again, using our older technologies, what we currently have. You're really targeting uh, very specific proteins on the outside of the influenza, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. We hear about H1N1, that's the H and that's the N. Uh, but every different strain really has different H's and different N's, and so that's why we have to keep reformulating it. But there's a few different areas within influenza that our bodies, our antibodies are able to see uh, that is really well conserved. Um, and so, like the matrix proteins and things, sort of things like that, which uh, you know, maybe outside of the realm of our discussion, but there are things that are very well conserved, and trying to target those for our new vaccines, and you know maybe we can have sort of broader protection, and then uh, working on new ways to sort of make that long lasting and effective. All right, are, we, are you working on next year's vaccine? And I hope it'll be better. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's going to depend on uh, what what the strain is that's going to be circulating. Uh, the influenza H1N1, uh, which is an influenza A, tends to be less severe and tend to have better uh, vaccine efficacy against those than, uh, for example, this year, it was an H3N2, uh, which tends to have, if you will, worse um, I infections and uh, worse uh, uh, vaccine uh, effect effectiveness. Uh, but overall, again, I do want to encourage people to get their vaccine, you know, 60 to 70 percent effective in most years is, is actually better. It's still than a pretty safe bet. It's still better. <laughs> and even those who get the vaccine and get infected are, are likely to have better outcomes than if they didn't get the vaccine. But it does stress we do need to put some more research and more funding into getting better influenza vaccines. Well, I, you know, I, th I did have the vaccine. I guess I did have a better outcome. I'm alive. I lived through it. And that, that <laughs> I guess that's something. Oh, but all you were you coughing. Expect. When you came back to work, I wanted to just send you back home again. It was so hard. Well, I, I know. And, and I'm not sure exactly when you should come back to work. But my neighbor, who is an intern, has said you can go. Oh, okay. And my well, wife said, him. you better go. <laughs> 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 all right, Dr. Pratish Tosh, infectious disease specialist and an expert on the flu. Sorry we didn't do better this year, but next year hopefully we will. Thanks Thank for you. being with us. Absolutely. Thank you.